Hi, and welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us today for another of Weekly Real Estate's News Expert Series. I'm Rick Grant. I'm editorial director here, and I've got a great show for you today. And like all of our shows, I'm talking a little bit to let people filter into the room, but like all of our shows and, and everything we write on Weekly Real Estate News, and you'll know this if you've read us for a while, it's all geared at making you more successful as real estate agents and your partners as well in the mortgage lending community and other places, title companies and whatnot. So we're very pleased to have you here. As you all know, getting consumers to move in a market where there's a lot of uncertainty can be very challenging. You need a way to give them some confidence, some assurance that it's going to be okay if, for instance, they buy a new home before they've sold their old home. Right? That can scare a lot of people, but it actually is possible. We're going to talk about it today. But before I introduce our guests, I want to make sure that you understand how to ask questions. Now, you're going to see, no matter where this is streaming, and it's streaming in a number of places, a place to make comments, throw up your questions. We're monitoring those as we go. And when we see something, like Stephen telling us to get this thing going, we're going to slap those things up and try to answer those questions as we go. We've tried to save time until the end to answer questions, and we found that our community is just, you guys are ready to go. You're ready for action. You're ready to get answers, and we want to support that. So if you give us your answer, your questions as you think of them, we'll try to get to them as quickly as we can. And since you're registered, we'll make sure that the conversation continues after the fact. All right, let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Today, grow your real estate business with a better buy before you sell process. And I've got three experts for you today. One, Chandra Sharastva. <laughs> I messed that up, Chandra. I'm so sorry. So she is part of the brains behind this product. She's going to help us understand what it is. But then Aaron Kirchner, he's a principal broker and partner at Luxury Homes of Tennessee, and Lindsay Moss Frangi, she's a branch partner at Alcova Mortgage. They've worked together on some of these deals. They're going to answer your questions about how this actually works. How can you actually use it? And what can you expect to get out of it? And we're going to talk to all of them right after this. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, all of you. This is great. Normally, we only get one or two guests to join us. Uh, I don't know. But I don't know what the reason for that is. But getting three, this is like a milestone for us. Thank you all for being here. Now, as we start our questions, I, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about who you are. But before we even start, Chandra, I want to go to you and find out, set the stage for us. What are we actually talking about with this product so we know what you know what questions to ask as we go? Absolutely. Um, we like to call the trade-in mortgage a better buy-before-you-sell process. And I, Rick, if you could pop up some slides for me, I think the visual will help us. Okay. So the trade-in mortgage is a better buy-before-you-sell process. Now... Clearly, that means your client can buy and move into their new home before they sell their current one. And this is really aiming to fix the problem of financing contingencies. So I'll let Aaron bemoan the problem of contingent financing, but I'm sure all of you have had deals fall through um, due to contingent financing or your client moved into a short-term rental and we're super unhappy. This fixes all of that. It also allows your lender to create non-contingent financing on the new home. And so uh, when you're in that bidding war, they are able to bid with no home sale contingencies. Um, and they're also able usually to qualify for a larger loan. And this, we'll get into the details of how that works in a second. Um, we are different, and I'm gonna go into the different options out there, but we don't require any commission shares or certifications. So realtors who work with us pay no extra. We also, unlike all the other uh, the processes out there, don't require any extra work from you. So we don't touch your processes. We don't touch the partners that you prefer, like title. Um, it literally takes about five extra minutes per transaction. And then finally, you get to work with lenders that you know and trust and have done deals with before. So you might be thinking, well, this is better than what, right? And uh, if you could go to the next slide, Rick. So most of you are familiar with iBuyers. Right. That company buys your client's home. They give them a cash offer. They usually lowball them on that home. And then they also cut the listing agent out of that deal. And that enables your client to have the cash on hand to buy their new home. 
Some of you might be familiar with PropTech platforms. Um, and these are companies that do a power buyer model where they'll buy your client's new home, your client gets to move in, um, and then they put their old home on the market. But they are, one, doing leaseback fees, which tend to be really expensive. And two, that house is being bought and sold twice. So this is a very pricey option for fixing financing contingencies. And this is where we come in. If you could go to the next slide. What we do is a much more efficient process. That means it is more cost effective for your consumers. It also means it's easier for you. So we provide a binding backup contract on your client's current home, but we give you 150 days to sell to someone else for more. And in 95-ish percent of cases, that happens. What this enables your lender to do, or your borrower's lender, is they can originate non-contingent financing on the new home. They can use a second to pull the equity from that home uh, so your client can put down a bigger down payment. Client closes, you list the old home, that 150-day timer starts, and you sell it on the open market. So this is really something that is simpler for you, more cost-effective for you, much easier for a borrower, and uh, more cost-effective for them as well. I love it. Now, John, we did have one question. I want you to respond to this. Help us understand how this differs from a bridge loan. Chris. That's a great question. Um, so this is different from a bridge loan in that it's usually cheaper than a bridge loan and it's also less risky. So with a bridge loan, your client is cross collateralizing across both their departing residents and their new residents. And Lindsay can also hop in here. She feels that I didn't explain it as well as I should. Um, but and so what they have to do is they have to qualify for the loan on the new home. They're still carrying their mortgage on their old home. And then they also have to qualify for the bridge. Some bridges have something called a balloon payment where after a certain amount of time, that bridge comes due whether or not you've sold the house. And that was really an issue during the 2008 financial crash um, for a lot of people um, was, was having those bridge bridges come due and they, they couldn't afford to pay it off. And so what this does is it allows the loan to be written on the new home without the departing residence's mortgage. So they only have to qualify for one loan, the loan on the new home. And if they decide to do the bridge, then they qualify for that. But there is a 150-day window. And when that's over, either they will have sold it to someone else or Calc will buy it. And so that bridge will be over within that time period. So it's less risky. Lindsay, did you want to? No, ask? that's correct. Okay, so cool. the beauty of this program is that you are not having to qualify on three mortgages. And a lot of times when I hear of people in uh, looking for bridge loans, they do not qualify for the bridge loan, the new purchase on the new house and the current mortgage that they have. So with this program, because we have a cash offer that is non-contingent, we can go conventional on the new home purchase. That's the only way this works and basically omit the current mortgage payment, omit the bridge loan payment if they need the bridge loan. Um, some people don't need the bridge loan. Um, for me, every person that has uh, come to me uh, to do a calc loan has actually needed the bridge. So we've done, um, I've done four of them and they've it, it's worked beautifully. All right, very good. Now, before we get too much deeper into how it works, I wanna take a half a step back and talk about why we need it. Now, I've bought and sold houses at the same time. And I can tell you from a consumer's point of view, but you guys work with consumers every day. You can tell us. So, so Aaron, let's start with you. First, tell us a little bit about your business and then talk about the challenges that you've seen in your business with sure. trying to buy and sell at the same time. Sure, sure. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I'm Aaron Kirshner and uh, uh, I'm one of the partners and owners and principal broker of Luxury Homes, and we have uh, presence in seven different states, and uh, our headquarters is in Tennessee, Franklin, Tennessee, so we have Luxury Homes in Tennessee, and uh, I've been able to have um, direct uh, transactions with the trade and mortgage through Calc, and uh, so I'm, I'm also practice what I preach, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here today to, to share that experience and experiences of our agents who've, who've done the product as well. But we're a, we're a full service, um, regular real estate brokerage, uh, and, and uh, I've been doing it for close to 30 years, as much as I try to deny that. <laughs> All right, excellent. So 
So what do you see in your business when you're talking to people you want to list and sell their homes for, but they're afraid or nervous? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Right now, it's even more pertinent, in my opinion. Uh, we have a lot of people on the fence, right? They're on the fence for many reasons, whether it's the economy, interest rates, inflation, you name it. There's, there's a reason. Um, this to me right now, this is a perfect time to have a solution. You know, a lot of products are out there and a lot of, there's a lot of other, you know, as real estate agents and professionals, we, we, we get bombarded as well with, with the next new product, the next new solution per se. This is actually, you know, um, an opportunity for somebody, you know, who is on the fence. And we see that a lot right now, you know, they don't want to give up their current situation to, to move um, or they can't, right. They can't, it's hard to qualify. There's, there's all these obstacles. What this enables is it, you know, it, it, it's doing several things. It's, it's creating more convenience. Um, you know, selling a home is one of the most emotional things, you know, I feel a family does. Um, we don't need to add any more um, drama or, or questions to that. We need to create some sort of confidence and comfort level. And, and that's what we look to do. And as a, as a real estate professional, I mean, that's our job. We're, we're supposed to be there for our client through the whole transaction. And if we can offer them something as a solution or to make that a better seamless transaction, that's what we look for. And that's what we strive to do. I love well, that. I love that. I'll well, just Lizzie, say, I'm, yeah, yeah I want to come to you. I want to first make sure that you tell us a little bit about your business and what, but I, but I know that mortgage lenders are kind it's not your fault that a lot of consumers are nervous about it but financing plays such a huge part so talk to us about what you're seeing yeah so i've been a mortgage lender uh for mortgage professional for 22 years uh in march um believe it or not um and i honestly when 2020 hit we had barriers broken where people were basically allowed to work remote and a lot of them still have that ability to work remote so when that happened, it caused an influx of people moving all over the country. And when we have a shortage of homes, as we get into the spring season, everybody knows there's going to be more competition. The rates are expected to drop a little. For every 1% in rates, they say 5 million buyers jump in. So you have to be as competitive as possible. And if you, unfortunately, you have um, a, a downside of having a house to sell, a first time home buyer doesn't have that. Uh, responsibility. So what Calc does is basically remove that contingency because if you're up against 10 other offers and nobody else has a contingency to sell their property, a, a seller is not going to take your offer on the home because they know that that's a higher risk. So in every case that I've had um, worked with Calc to do this trade in mortgage, they were found the home of their dreams and the seller refused to accept the contingency. So that is where you're going to see the benefits um, truly shine on this product, because if somebody, you know, they found the house of their dreams, they, they want to move, um, but they just, you know, the seller won't accept that contingency. This is where you're going to be able to help them get into that home and then sell that home. And I saw a question about what happens after 150 days, if not sold, if it's not sold, Calc comes and buys it for the offer that they agreed upon. So it's 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 a fail safe. It's a way for your buyer to make a non-contingent offer on a home and they don't have to say they're selling their home because we're already doing it on the back end with a non-contingent offer from Calc. And then you as the realtor have 150 days to sell that home on the market for top dollar before Calc comes in and buys it at that PPG, their purchase price guarantee. Very good. Now, Chandra, tell us a little bit about that purchase price guarantee. How does that number, how does that number come up? Yeah. So what happens, um, the purchase price guarantee is essentially what we're calling our, our binding backup contract offer that we're putting in on that, that client's house. And so your client fills out a three minute questionnaire. I filled it out so many times I can do it in two minutes now, uh, but a three minute questionnaire where they just tell us about their house, you know, do they have granite countertops? Have they done a, a bathroom remodel, right? Um, and we pull some AVMs and we put a valuation on that house. Um, and what we'll do first is we'll call uh, the loan officer, chat with them about it, and then we'll call your client and present that offer. That offer is, de depending on the market, it's running somewhere between 82 and 90% of the appraised value of the home. So what I want to really emphasize here is 
this is a backup offer. <laughs> we don't want to buy that house. Our business model has been designed to be as lean as possible to give as much back to the consumer as we possibly can. And so we actually lose money when we buy houses. So we want you to sell it for more. In the instance where we do buy it, we will um, probably do some renovations to it. We will relist it on the market. If we sell that home for more than we bought it for, once we remove our costs, we'll give your client any profit back. So wow, this is a... Yeah, yeah this is a sale phase. We don't we we don't want them to feel worried or concerned that we're trying to lowball them. Um, but usually, if a, a house hasn't sold in a market, it's because it was priced too high, and we're unable to sell it for more than we bought it for. So just yeah, and Aaron, I'll ask you more about that in a minute. One of the things I love about providing webinars for this market. This group of, of attendees that we typically get is, boy, they just hit you with the questions. They're going to be right there. Here's one. Luis says, in the case that the seller has all the equity and their down payment in the next home and the sale of the property can't sell, someone who wants to give 25 down, they can't. They're locked in, right? So what will happen if the current house is not selling? And, John, I think you did a great job of answering right now. But, but Aaron, I want to go back to you and ask you, if you had to say what's kind of the biggest obstacle you need to overcome to really get the business flowing the way you need it to be, what's that going to be? Well, I think, I think first thing um, is fear to overcome the fear. Um, a lot of our, you know, a lot of our clients, um, you know, come to us because they they're seeking our, our guidance, right. And uh, our expertise, uh, they also need some level of comfort and confidence. And I believe, you know, you, you, besides just saying something or having a product, you know, there's products out there now that sure they'll give you a guaranteed offer and then you're homeless. Um, in this case, um, there's a solution beyond that. You know, it's a different creative approach. Um, it, it can sound complicated. And of course, one of our obstacles as agents is trying to explain something to them. And, and in that case, you know, what is the gist? Like, how does this work? Uh, you know, wait, like client's going to say, okay, well, so wait, what are you saying? I can, I can actually go buy that house right now um, or go, go find that house I want to buy and actually feel confident that I can not just win the offer, right, but also be able to get to the closing table and get the keys and, and, and move in that house. Um, that one is your first obstacle. The second thing is, OK, how does the process work? How is it going to flow? How is how, how to, you know, explain to me what where I go with this? You know, I, I OK, we go look at a house. We find a house. Now we're going to list my house, too. So, yes, we are. And we're going to list it at fair market value. We're going to list it just like a normal home, you know, like we normally would. There's no there's no change there. So there's no change for us realtors. We can market the home. We can we can sell it for the highest and best price. That said, the third part is, okay, well, how do, how do I do this? Like what happens then? You know, like, okay, I go buy my house. I can actually close. That's great. I can still have my other house here. It's vacant. Now that's great. In a lot of cases, I love a lot of clients out there and we all have them. However, their homes usually are better off when they're not in there for multiple reasons, not just for us selling it as a professional, but for them as a homeowner. Who wants to, you know, we always hear those commercials, you know, no showings, no this, no that. Yeah, you, you, that's true. You don't have to do that if you go this way as well. But the best thing about this is you already have somewhere to go. You know where you're moving. You're not going to be caught at the end. Oh, great. My house is sold. What do I do now? And I'm in a competitive market, this and that. Or I might have missed out on the house I, I love. So all that sort of does have some fear background. I feel that clients have experienced and, and, and we've seen it. We've dealt with clients like that. Uh, and it is a challenge to express to them that, hey, no, this does work. Um, and, and, and you have to be able to relay that to them in a way that, you know, lets them understand that there is there is a there is a method to this. Absolutely. Now, you say it works. Because you know it because you've done this. How long have you been doing this? Uh, over since since uh, Calca started. So it's been what almost over two years now, almost two years. I, wow. Um, okay. and, and, and and it's not just me. Actually, I've had agents do. I even had an agent use the product themselves. So if that's not a testimony, I, I don't know what would be. <laughs> All right. All right. Now. Lindsay, I want to come to you, but but Chandra, in the meantime, we'll get some great questions. I don't know if you can see all the questions. Some of them go into some specifics, some specific requests for information about the revenue model. I don't know how much you want to get into on this call. Think about that while I go to Lindsay. And Lindsay, one of the questions that we had is why would a mortgage company even do this? So from the mortgage perspective, tell us 
what's happening here, what the investors are thinking when you come up with this and how it works. So that's why it's important that we do conventional because conventional Fannie and Freddie both uh, say that if you have a non-contingent cash offer on your home, we do not have to count those payments. And if they need the bridge loan, here's the other caveat. So when we do, when Calc makes the PPG, the per purchase price guarantee, we basically work off of that and we do the bridge loan at a certain percentage and we call it a bridge loan, but it basically it's a second mortgage. We do that for a certain percentage of what Calc offers. That leaves a little bit of room for, you know, the, um, Realtor commissions to be paid if you sell it on the top, you know, for top dollar on the market before 150 days. I mean, all the things that you would normally pay for in a sale. Um, but there's really not a risk to the borrower. I mean, to the lender per se, because if they don't have the reserves, we do look at four payments of the bridge loan and four payments of their current mortgage. If they don't have that money saved, we actually use the bridge loan to pull out a little money to the side. So if their current mortgage is $1,000 a month and the bridge loan is going to be $1,000 a month, that's $2,000 times four. That's $8,000 that we set aside. So when they go to close that bridge loan right before they purchase their home that they want, um, they are going to get that money and have it set aside so they can make those four payments before Calc comes in and buys the home. All right, good. So there's no underwriting tricks here. You're still going through the full underwriting process. Correct. You're, yeah, you're still looking at both properties and the borrowers and everything else. This just gives you the, the breathing room to to start to transact. Chandra, have you had a chance to think about how much we can tell them now about how this all works internally? Totally. Uh, I'm going to be very transparent. So we charge fees. Our fee is $2,000 admin fee, and then we charge 1% of the purchase price guarantee. So that is the guarantee backup offer we put on the departing residents. Um, so if someone has a $500,000 home, then we're going to charge 2,000 plus 5,000 to 7,000 as the Calc fee. Our biz, and then if, if they decide to do a bridge, each lender uh, has specific bridge fees that they charge. Calc's revenue model is Met large volume of transactions with very low fees and having really strong risk mitigation. So we buy very few homes and that that's really what we do. All right. Because have you, as you've already pointed out, it's not your goal to end up with the homes. It's your goal to kind of put the grease on the skids and make those transactions actually start to move in the market. And what great timing, because we're already hearing lots of signs in the market Right. I see you nodding there. So I'm going to go to you, Aaron. The 2024 could be a much better year for agents yeah. if they're prepared. Talk to us about that. Yes. Yes. I, I know that uh, myself and a lot of colleagues and, and, and uh, everybody I know that I'm in the profession are, you know, we're looking at 2024 as a, as a different year than 2023 um, in many ways, uh, but mainly because we've had this. I mean, you look at the numbers, you know, and we, we, we always go back and say, okay, where were we compared benchmark against last year? And where do we look this year? Um, I feel just based on everything I've heard, of course, you have to decipher a lot of that, as we know. Uh, but, you know, from interest rates to just the economy as a whole, I feel that, um, you know, we're going to be in a much better position. Uh, you know, I know I know, we hear words of recession and all that. I, I just, I also remember that through my years of experience is, is if you focus on what you do and you do it well, um, you know, you, you can only control what you do. So that said, um, you know, looking at 2024, I feel we're going to see um, a, a large, a large wave, you know, of, of prospective clients coming, you know, to the market. And, and what's going to happen then is also there's going to be more competition, as we know. And, and we haven't seen a price adjustment as much as the economists would expect, in my opinion, over the last year, just because of the interest rates and, 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 uh, and the way the market's really been unique. Uh, that said, um, I feel that right now, and I mean, we talk to our agents all the time about this, is trying to get your clients to know, okay, hey, if the market does shift, as we think it might, you know, do you want to compete with everybody then? Or would you rather find that house now, buy it, you know, sell your house, 
and then you know you can refinance later um, if you do the math sometimes um, uh, you know you know it, it's a better option uh, possibly than going back to where we were I'm not saying we'll be there that in that in that same situation however you know we've had a 180 from where we were two years ago so you know where will that land in 2024 uh, i mean i'm excited about the market picking up but i'm also concerned that we're going to have so many clients at that time too uh, we'll still have short supply and then we're also going to be running into the same problem of competitive you know competitive offers and how is your client going to win versus the handful of others who are also making an offer so yeah, absolutely. I see you nodding, Lindsay, because when he talks about interest rates and mortgage, you've been dealing with that all year. Talk about how that has affected your business. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> affordability on home prices, um, we've seen uh, actually month over month, we've seen another, well, 2023, we had an average of 5.2% in appreciation across the country. Um, obviously, there's pockets and markets that are going to be stronger than others. But that's still really strong. I mean, imagine, you know, someone buying a home and holding on to it for three years and then selling it for a 15 percent profit. Um, renting is still 100 percent rate. You're paying the landlord's mortgage. So to be the most competitive and as these rates drop, the market is going to get hot. There's going to be a lot of people with pent up demand, um, people wanting to grow their families, divorces, uh, marriages, that they are sitting on the sidelines waiting for something to change. I honestly don't think we're going to see prices drop much um, because of that over four million shortage of homes and they can't build them fast enough. So at the end of the day, um, we have to have creative programs like Calc um, that's going to help us get create the inventory allow the people to move out of the home before they, you know, buy the home before they sell. And that's why this program has been so successful. Um, I feel like it's going to help create inventory that we wouldn't otherwise have. Well, sure. Sure. That makes perfect sense. But the proof of that is probably best illustrated with how your businesses benefited from this program last year. So last year and earlier when I said all year long, I meant all last year long. <laughs> Last year was tough for a lot of people in our industry, really tough. And and I wouldn't expect you to tell me it wasn't tough for your business, but I would like to know from each of you, what difference having a product like this in your tool set made on your business in 2023 to kind of give our, our viewers an idea of what it might do for you this year? Aaron, let's start with you. Sure, I, I can give you um, some estimated numbers. Uh, you know, it enabled, uh, we had at least, three transactions, um, which isn't just one side. So when you do the math, you know, if you have a $500,000 house to sell and somebody's buying a $700,000 house, not, you know, you, you, you start to accumulate there because you're actually doing more than one transaction. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we, we were over probably several million dollars just in, in sales that we wouldn't have had, um, because, there was an option for somebody. There was a, a, a tool that they could use uh, like the trading mortgage with cow to, to be able to do that. I mean, that's, I, I just, we just had um, one close the end of the year and, and uh, you know, they were trying to buy another house and, and uh, you know, they also, you know, so that was a sale and a purchase. So uh, from a, from a business standpoint, um, those, those are opportunities. I, I look at, you know, the opportunity we have and, and, from a business standpoint, you know, that's, that's from that side. Now, from a, from a client and personal standpoint, you know, we, we had happy people. I mean, there's it's hard to put a value on that. I don't want to sound too salesy, but it's true as a, as a, we are a, you know, I believe this whole profession is relationship driven. And if I can provide value to my clients and it's through a tool, um, then to me, it's, it's, you know, it's something I'm going to use. And if it's not something I'm going to use, I, I won't use it. But, you know, then in our case last year, uh, it was, it, it proved beneficial and, and, and we earned, we earned money off of it as a company. Fantastic. Well, I know all of the people watching this are successful in their business. They know really well how important that customer satisfaction, that customer experience is. Lindsay, from your perspective, how did this impact your business last year? Um, it impacted it uh, greatly. I mean, in 22 years, I will I will say, and I'm not uh, too ashamed to say it, but yet last year was actually one of the, the second worst year in my whole career um, because there was a lot of fear in the markets. Um, you know, 
single teacher that wants to buy a loan cannot qualify for most price uh, in the price range that we have right now. So um, I had at one point in early 2023, over 50 pre-approved buyers that literally got priced out. Um, so this program has number one, created new relationships that I, I you know, so appreciate and nurture with agents who I've worked with on uh, the trade in mortgage. Um, we call it the trade in mortgage, uh, but Calc. Uh, and I've closed, I closed uh, four loans that would have not closed. Uh, and then, you know, they sold their home. Um, happy buyers, happy sellers. Uh, so it's been extremely, you know, something that I've been on the other side of knock and I've, I've been the lender at a closing. Most of them are not really happy, like, cause they've, been through the ringer and the, the fees are keep adding up and everything. And it's, it's just, um, this is just, it's happy. Everybody is so satisfied. They feel like they were confused in the beginning, but once you kind of set it out in front of them and show them the numbers, they're like, this actually is so much better and we're going to get the house we want. And, you know, my, my saying that I always tell to people is that you can always refinance later, but you can never go back and pay less for the home. Um, so that to me is a big motivator, I think, in 2024 that is different than 2023. And now that the rates, I mean, we had a peak, I mean, we're, you know, 8% for some people close in October. So now that we're coming back, we're in, you know, high sixes as we get through this year, they expect that we may see low sixes. Um, if we see something with a five in front of it, we're, it's going to be go time. And it's going to be crazy. And <laughs> yeah. that's what I live for in this business. There's never a dull day in the mortgage industry. And I get to work with different people every day. And that's why I love my job. So yeah. I love that. Now, in a second, Aaron and Lindsay, I'm going to come back to both of you and ask you how you use innovative tools like the trade and mortgage to be more competitive. How do you use that on the marketing side of your business? But first, Chandra, I want to ask you, when you talk to new real estate agents or mortgage lenders about this product, what are the key questions that you usually have to answer to get that conversation going? What are they asking you about? Yeah, the most common thing I hear is a lot of people think that we're like a knock or a home life, that we're going to buy the home and, and that's the primary business model. And so um, usually it's just clearing out, clearing up how does this work? Um, then the next question we get is, are you going to touch my commissions if Calc ends up buying the house? And the answer is no, we don't ever interfere with the commissions that you set um, with your consumer. Um, then maybe questions about what marketing support do you provide? And the answer is we can um, co-brand materials with you or the lender you work with. Uh, for the trade and mortgage, flyers, booklets, print material, social media, et cetera, to help you kind of get the word out about this product. I think those are the big ones. Wow. So it's not just it's not just like an insurance product that you're taking. You know, you're actually helping them market. Yeah, 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 yes. Especially, um, especially, you know, a lot of our business is coming through through our lenders. So absolutely, they get full marketing support, but we also provide full marketing support for agents. Um, and this is a little less known, uh, but if you kind of sign up with us, learn a little bit about it, and we have, you know, we don't require certifications, we don't require training, um, and yeah, we can we can help you get materials. That's fantastic. Now, this is a great question for Nance asks. He wants to know about, are you working with developers? I assume he means builders to increase demand on single family homes. Now, I have seen around the country a number of municipalities forming deals with builders to build more affordable housing, but many times because of affordability issues in those communities, it still isn't enough to really get the market going. Do you have a program to work with builders or municipalities or anything like that? So we are working with a, a few builder lenders. So we there now we've got the agents, the builder and the lender in the transaction. Yeah. Um, and so we, we do do that. Um, right now we're offering contracts for homes that are trying to, you know, they're trying to buy a home that is close to finished. 
we don't have a program, you know, if the home's not going to be finished in nine months, we're in the works of creating a product for that, but we just don't have it yet because predicting what we think is going to happen in the market over a four month period is very different than trying to predict it over a nine or a 12 month period. Yeah, of course. Now, Randall is asking a good question. You, you are kind of in a position, Chandra, to be a universal connector here. So does the company do that? Can you s connect the players in the market to make a deal work in a, in a market? Absolutely. So um, if, a, if a realtor would like an introduction to lender in their market, you can get in touch with us. Um, you can email us from the website. You can call us and we will put you in touch with preferred lenders that we work with. The other option is if your client submits a transaction, they don't have to submit it with a lender. They can submit it, they type in you, the real, the real estate agent's name, and when we get that transaction, we will, um, we will farm it out to one of our lenders and we'll get in touch with the realtor and let them meet the loan officer and know where to go from there. That's a great reason for, for both sides. Building that business referral partnership has been challenging over the past year and a half. And so this could be a good way to do that. Now, I want to ask you two, Aaron and Lindsay, about your marketing position with this and what impact that's had on your business. And, and Lindsay, this time I want to start with you. And just for the record, I want to let our viewers know that I also did not think you were old enough to have this much experience. <laughs> so it's not just them. How are you using the trade and mortgage to be more competitive in your market? Um, it's kind of funny because I have a private group of about 1,500 mortgage moms on Facebook and um, they are a lot of uh, our friends of mine on Facebook. And I did a video on the trade in mortgage and I shared something about buy before you sell. And um, a lot of loan officers are asking, like, what is this program? What is this that you're doing? Like, is this the, you know, uh, uh, Andy Mac had a um, buy now, sell later program, um, but they were buying the home. And so this is so much different than what everybody else seems to think they have in terms of products that I have an edge on pretty much anybody in my market because they're not doing this. Um, so that's been my edge. I also have a um, PowerPoint presentation that um, my company has put together with Calc and I have done a couple of presentations. Um, but really getting it out on social media, I'm just trying to get the word out because I think that if more people knew about this program, we could help fix the inventory problem um, because a lot of people are sitting there. Um, the one thing that I would tell you is that for any lender, we need them to make six payments on that purchase mortgage before they pay that off. Um, so basically when they go to purchase their home and they've pulled out the bridge, they still have some equity sitting aside. And three out of the four times that I've used Calc, they've sold the, the, their current home within 30 days of, of us doing the purchase. So they had this chunk of money that they're sitting on that they just sold their home for top dollar on the market. And now they have another 40,000 or, you know, however much that is that once they sold it. Um, I actually tell them how to do a principal reduction and a one-time recast because on conventional loans, one time you can typically call your uh, servicer and ask them to do a principal reduction with recast. And if you're making $10,000 or more principal reduction, they will do that and recast your payment without having to refinance. Um, so it's, it's really given me an edge. It's just a matter of screaming it from the highest hilltops because it's just, you got to get the word out. I love that. I love that. Now, Aaron, in your business, competition is fierce. It's always been fierce. You've had some of the biggest real estate companies in the land open up their iBuyer doors in, as a way to compete. Um, so is this an iBuyer killer? Does it allow you to, to compete straight across? What's it done for your business? Uh, well, great questions. Uh, first of all, it, it, it's different. It's, it's, you could call it a killer, but again, it's, um, it, 
it's a solution. Uh, a lot of times the others aren't a solution. It's a, it's a quick fix maybe. And then somebody still has another part of the equation to finish. This is the whole equation, you know, so it's, it's, it's the whole package. You're not just eating part of it, you know, it's so, okay. Yeah. Come by my house. Great. Now what do I do? Um, and, 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 and also from a professional standpoint, uh, you know, we want to make our clients happy. We want to help them. Uh, we care uh, and and we should. And part of that is like, okay, well, you know, somebody comes along and wants to buy your house. That's great. They, you feel they give you a fair price. That's great. However, what's your, what's your plan from here? Where are you going to go? Uh, what are you going to do? You know, we market this, um, you know, just at giving, giving, um, offering that option to people. You know, we try to be more of a consultant uh, as a professional versus just an order taker, right? We're, we're, we're in this as a professional to find the best solution, not just the best home for our, our clients, but the best means to get there. And if this is an option for them, this blows those others away because it doesn't just take them to step one. You know, they get past the start line, they finish the race and they actually get to the finish line. Yeah, that makes great sense. Now, I may be making an assumption here, which an interviewer should never do, but in the name of your company, Aaron, I noticed that you have luxury. So it tells me you might be dealing with a clientele that may be more used to forming those kind of relationships with trusted partners. Is that the case with your business or no? Uh, that's actually our, our, our brand is luxury homes of Tennessee. We also have a dual brand. We're homes like homes of Tennessee. So we're dual branded. So we do all price points. We just don't dilute our, our luxury brand. And we, we offer the full spectrum for, for all clients. Right. Um, and uh, to answer your question though, yeah, the, the, the uh, clients who are, who are purchasing a higher priced home, um, you know, this product can still work. It just depends on the mechanics of it. Um, we, I want to say, you know, obviously there's, um, there's one thing that I think no matter what the price point is, the consumer is always wanting, and our industry has sort of failed at that over the years, right, is transparency. And uh, people want to know how much they're going to pay. I, I don't, you know, whether it's a higher priced home or, or, or lower priced or medium home, you know, you just want to know, you want to know, okay, like I have so many clients that, okay, this sounds great, but how much is it going to cost me? Like, what am I going to know? Am I going to get, you know, I'm going to get hit with these fees at the end of the day. And so, so there's, there's more to it. Right. And, and that's, that's where, you know, this product, you know, with the transparency, everything's spelled out. Everybody knows they're on the same page. There's no mystery. There's no, Oh, wait till closing. And then you'll get something there. That's not it. This is totally upfront. You know what it is. Uh, you got a company that's going to stand behind it. I, 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 you know, I represent, all of our agents, right? So I have to make sure if we offer a product like this, it has to be has to be legitimate. It can't just be the next best thing, right? Um, or the most popular, or the most publicized. Um, we, you know, we try to treat this as you know, it is a solution, and it's a solution for a situation, and uh, it's a great solution at that. So, and I, I just it. wanted to add. So uh, conventional, the loan limits for conventional are 766550 That's the national. And then you have com uh, the conforming high balance. So this program to be able to not have to uh, qualify with all three mortgages, um, that is going to be on a conventional loan. So as long as we can fit the loan amount into the conventional of 766550 or the agency high balance, then we will be able to make it work. Um, it's the other guidelines that don't take that non-contingent cash offer and let us omit that payment. Yeah, but it raises a good question in my mind. Chandra, do you anticipate that other investors might see the value in a product like this and begin to kind of follow a similar vein and, and they already have a copycat oh. or they're getting a copycat. Oh, good. All right. Okay. All right. They, yeah. So, um, Calc was the first company to come to market with this particular, particular model. Um, we have put years of compliance and due diligence and legal work into making sure that what we're doing is blessed by Fannie and Freddie, that it is compliant. There are other companies that are starting to move towards this model. Um, they're offering backup contracts. I would be very careful and vet how solid they have done their background work to make sure it's RESPA compliant um, and especially for the lenders you know, compliant. No, that makes sense. Uh, I was talking more in terms oh, of- Oh, I'm sorry. Of, no, that's okay. In terms of investors who will take it, Fannie and Freddie get it. They know if, they, if you're doing the pre mortgage, they can take that current house payment 
off the DTI and off of the ability to repay rules and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But as uh, as Lindsay points out, that's why it's important that we stay with those conforming loans now. I, oops, I just showed you how old I am. Like, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I know what a conforming loan. Be. So, but but do you anticipate other investors offering loan products that that will in their underwriting take into account that you got to trade in uh, deal on the back end. I hope FHA, FHA does. I, I, I assume they will. I, I can't speak to it saying, yes, I know they will. Yeah. Um, but it seems like a smart move. I think as it gets more commonplace in the market and they see lots of established, you know, competent lenders doing it, I suspect that this will become more and more um, commoditized. Okay. All right. Very good. I can't believe it. We only have 15 minutes left already. It seems like we just started talking. Now, I always like to ask the question about how something makes you more competitive before I ask you to do what we're all about at Weekly Real Estate News, and that is help others become more competitive. So I want to ask each of you, um, well, actually all of you, Sean, or you too, what are some tips or tricks that you might suggest to other agents or mortgage brokers or lenders that would make them more successful with this particular product. Aaron, why don't we start with you on that? Sure. Yeah, I think I think one thing we always look for is, is you know, to create activity, to create movement, right? Um, with all those people sitting on the fence is, is, is being able to, you know, get them to move uh, from the standpoint to 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 their to their betterment, obviously, but also um, a lot of people just get kind of stuck and and uh, as a as a as a client, right? They're they're not sure what they want to do. They're not confident, you know, all those things we talked about already. But part of it is, is that being able to, to, you know, get to a point where they're, um, you know, where, where you create the activity, you create the, um, the need, you know, as well, because a lot of times it's education and somebody doesn't know, you know, where they're in their house thinking, oh my gosh, I, I, every day or every week they, they see the house they really want, or they find one that would fit their budget and fit their needs. And, and what do they do? They, they're like, well, I can't buy it. You know, interest rates are too high and I'd have to sell my house and, you know, all these things that go in their head and it's sort of helping. Um, so for me, it's like helping educate and, and re-script it and, and give, you know, I think everybody always looks for an opportunity and it's, this is a way to, you know, show some opportunity. So for me, it's like uh, tips and competitive competition is, is to, to educate and show that, Hey, there's a, there's a tool out there you could use, not just for this, but let's just say we're going to help you buy a house, right? You see, you found that house. Now you, you want to buy it. You're worried you can't buy it because you have to sell your home. Okay. Let's also look at the fact that, that house you buy, you know, might be, it might be, it's very competitive, right? It might be, a, a, there might be, we're going to get into it, it, my opinion, is a more competitive market, right? Where they're going to have more buyers. Um, prices haven't come down like everybody thought. So what's going to happen? I mean, as a, as a seller, you're going to take the least contingencies, the best looking offer out there, the best timeline. Uh, this, this, provide solutions. So part of it is to share, to talk to those people on the fence, those prospects, you know, prospects who can become clients and targeting them too, not just looking at the person that's just teed up and ready. Uh, a lot of times they, they may not be, um, you might have a better client sitting in the sidelines here, just on the fence waiting and, and, to reach out to them, to market to them, to target them, to get creative and say, hey, you know, thinking about buying, but you just feel you can't, you know, hey, here's how we can help. Something along those lines. Great, great pro tips. Thank you, Aaron. Lindsay, I want to come to you next. But first, we are seeing some comments asking for contact information, where to go for more information. We're going to give you all of that, all of that before we end. But Lindsay, talk on your side of the business. What are the pro tips you would tell other mortgage lenders to consider with this trade and mortgage? The best advice I can give them is to get with Calc, sign up, um, get your company ready to go if you can. Um, the, the main key, and you know, I think some lenders um, don't have the ability maybe to do the bridge financing. Um, we were you know, fortunate enough that our owners of Alcova were able to um, get that worked out. And so we're using basically an investor that we are you know, able to do those. Um, but the biggest thing is to 
just let people know about this because unfortunately it's it, it's on us to let our consumers know that hey there is a product out there did you know that you can actually buy the home you want before you sell the one that you have um people have kids pets i mean all sorts of stuff going on life going on the last thing they want to do is have to take everybody out of the house and drive around for an hour while someone is showing the property Let's get Calc involved. Let's get this backup offer. That way we can get you into your home and then your house is vacant to show any time. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's crazy because people worry about that house to sell after the fact, but it sells fast. And even when houses are sitting longer, you have the backup plan. And, you know, the, the you know, Calc does purchase the home. Um, they are not going to leave them hanging. And I can vouch for that because I actually had one where it did not sell and they just purchased it. And so they're going to fix it up, do whatever they are going to do to it and remarket it. But, you know, the guy is happy. The client is happy. And that's what matters. That's what matters to everyone. So, you know, just getting the word out and talking to people, anybody that you've had that had a house to sell that didn't want to do it in the crazy 2020 and 2021 uh, fit that we had, um, get back with them. You know, Happy New Year. Hey, I've got this new you know, product that I can actually help you get into a new home before you sell. So, you know, and, and talk to the, your title companies about this as well, because, you know, the more people that know about this program, the more inventory we can help create in this country. And that's the big sticking point right now is nobody wants to move because they can't find what they want. But when they find that perfect home, Calc is it. Calc is the is the way to get that house. Uh, so I love that, Lindsay. Thank you. One I think it's a silver lining of the last couple of years. The downturn has been that the order takers of the industry have kind of filtered out. And now we have consultants like you guys that really seem to care about providing the information that your customers need to feel safe, comfortable, and, and really to transact. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough for being with us today. But Chandra, for new new people into the program, a new real estate, a lender. As Lindsay said, there's a few things you got to wire up in the back end. Do you have a team that helps them handle that work? Yeah, absolutely. So for lenders, uh, actually for everyone. So for lenders, we can get them up and going in as, as little as two weeks. So it's a very light implementation. Um, and then for real estate agents, we can get you guys going um, in as little as one week, you can even get a transaction going right away. So it's a, a very fast, easy process. We have a customer experience team that is going to proactively reach out to both the loan officers and the real estate agents at every step. So you'll always be reached out to before your consumers talk to, and they will lead you through the process. So there's very little um, kind of training required, very light lift on your side. I love that. Now, in a second, I'm going to ask you, how they can get started. But Sabina, I think it's Sabina Miller, has a great question. Not all of these deals are going to be pretty and perfect and have everything in line. What happens in the case that you've got a client that has to work with a different program to get their down payment or some other hitch? Uh, can you work through those things? So conventional loan, you don't need 20% down. Um, so I'm kind of confused on the question with the conventional mortgage can be, this can be buying combined with one of those programs where they pay down less. I mean, conventional, if you are not a first time home buyer, you only need 5% down. Um, if you are a first time home buyer or you qualify for home ready and home possible, then you can put 3% down. So you don't need that hefty down payment. And if they don't want the bridge loan, let's say that they, you know, have money to put down and, and they just want to wait until the house sells to deal with the principal reduction and the one-time recast, um, you know, they can do that. Um, but if they're able to pull out their equity um, or, you know, need that down payment money, they can put as little as three to 5% down on a conventional loan. Um, the PMI, which I just saw the additional question, PM, to buy out PMI, at 3% down, um, it, it's definitely going to cost a, a little bit more. Um, you can do lender paid MI, you can do borrower uh, single premium where they pay it at closing. 
So that's always something that um, the loan officer working with Calc can actually talk to you about and okay. talk to the client about. All right, but it's not like the deal has to be this cookie cutter type thing in order for this to work, right? No, it does not. Okay. No. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Chandra, in a, in a second, I'm going to come back to you and ask you to give us just a quick, how do we get started with this? But first I want to ask both of our guests, Aaron and Lindsay, if there are key takeaways, things that I didn't ask you, wish I had asked you, the things that you think are important for our audience to know, what would they be? Lindsay, why don't we start with you? Just get out there and talk, uh, talk about this program. I think that it's going to actually get you some business and I wish everybody a wonderful 2024 and you can find me on social media. You can find me um, pretty much Google my name um, and you'll find me. If I can help with anybody on the real estate side, the mortgage side um, for, you know, questions about the product, um, how to sell it, anything like that, I'm always willing to help. Um, I know that Chandra is amazing. Everybody at Calc is amazing. So you're going to like working with them. And this is, you know, the, the main thing is just get out there and, and, you know, spread the word. Very good. We only have a few minutes left and I think that's good because your dog sent us a clear message that maybe time to go out. Aaron, from your perspective, what are the key takeaways that you want to make sure we don't miss? Sure. Sure. Um, I think you've done a great job. Asked some wonderful questions. The, um, the takeaway for me is, is, is to know that, that, you know, this is a solution. It's a real solution. It works. Um, it, it's, it's not a trial. It's, it's actually um, proven. It helps people. It actually is something that's useful. And as far as working with Calc, um, you know, I think that's huge. We have to feel comfortable in the, in the other entities that we work with and we align with. Um, I have to say my clients, myself, my agents, we've all had great uh, customer service interactions uh, from this type of product. You know, you need to have some explanation and knowledge. They do a wonderful job with that. They help clarify things. It's not on us, the agents, to know everything about this. You have a great resource in calc and they will help take that ball and, and and go with it so um and i you know it's great fantastic fantastic now chandra i want to say that i am very impressed with how transparent you've been about everything here and and helping us meet some fantastic uh guests today and experts in their fields if someone wants to get started what do they do what are the steps absolutely um and I'm going to answer Winona's question. She said, are credit unions open to this program? Um, yes, we would love to work with credit unions. We don't have credit unions nationwide, uh, but we do have some. Um, okay, so to get started, you can go to our website at tradeandmortgage.com. You can check things out, and there's a sign-up section for agents. Um, the second thing you can do is reach out to Shay or Chandra at calcing.com. Uh, Shay will be better. Uh, she's running our agent relations. And so if you reach out to her, we can get you the marketing materials you need. Um, one thing that I want to mention is thinking about tips for people trying to get this on the market. We have emails that we've drafted that you can send out to your CRM with a flyer. So you don't even have to draft your own emails if you don't want to. Um, and so if you reach out to Shay, we'll get you into our system and, and get you started. Fantastic. We only have a few minutes left. If there's any final questions, get them into your comments. Otherwise, I want to thank our guests today. This has hands down been one of the best webinars we've done, I think. Aaron Kirchner, thank you for being with us. Lizzie Moss Frangie, Frangi, thank you for being with us. And Chandra Shrivastava, thank you all for this great information. Yeah. If more <laughs> questions come in after the fact, uh, we'll send them to you. Uh, we're getting some thank yous and probably going to get some positive reviews on what you've shared. Um, it's all part of what we try to do on a regular basis here at Weekly Real Estate News, and I hope you'll join us next time for another program.